What's up, Instructional Technology Scholars? It's time to check out another cool tool, and today we're looking at one of my favorite tools, Google, and checking out all the great things that Google Apps for Education has for you, all right? So we're not just talking about how to do a Google search. We're going to be looking at Google Drive and some overview of Google Apps. All right, so if you have no familiarity using your Google Drive, if it's brand new for you, this is going to be a great place for you to start. I'm going to show you how to log in and some basic features of your drive. But first, why Google? All right, why are educators raving about all the uses and tools of Google? For one, you're able to access your files on any device anywhere. All right, so as long as you're connected to the internet, you're connected to your Google Drive. So you no longer have to worry about VPNing or making sure that you have a flash drive or saving things um, on your desktop and just hoping that your computer doesn't crash. All right, if you are using Google, then you have access to your files all the time, anywhere, from any machine. Another great reason to use Google is because saving is not required, right? So as long as you have started something in your Google Drive, you have opened something, named it, started working on something, whatever it is, it's always going to stay there. So that's really great for a student who may be passionately uh, working on an essay for you or any kind of assignment, and then the bell rings, they got to be out in the hallway greeting their friends, and they forget to save it, all right? They shut down, log off, and their, their work is gone forever. What's great about Google is that that work is going to automatically be there on their Google Drive in any classroom on any device from until the student removes it, right? So it's a really great tool. Also, it's very easy to share and collaborate, right? So instead of having to add attachments or upload files somewhere, you're now able to easily share with between students and between your colleagues. And that's great as we're moving towards more of this blended learning environment where students are using both a classroom in, in, in class and face-to-face -face class time as well as doing online stuff, all right? And last but not least, it's all that space, all right? So if you could consider for a minute all the network space in the building, all right? So combine every teacher account, every student account, all those H drives, as well as our P drive, you individually on your Google account have that much space or maybe even more just on your individual Google account. So you have tons of space. It's going to be very rare that you are going to run out of space. So it's time to get googly. If your H drive is uh, running out of space, if you can't keep track of all those flash drives that you have, let's start using Google. All right. So to get using Google, we're going to go ahead over to uh, google.com and I'll show you how to sign in and some basic features of your Google Drive. Okay, so here we are on google.com, and the most important first thing I must tell you is how essential it is to use your Chrome browser, all right? If you're used to using Internet Explorer, you need to make sure that you are switching over to your Chrome browser if you're using anything Google, all right? So Google Apps, Google Docs, Google Drive, everything is going to work a whole lot better in Chrome, all right? So that's the first step. All right, so now that we're on google.com, there's a couple different ways that you can log into your account. You have this button up here on your bookmarks bar, which will take you to your FCPS Google Apps. But since we're on google.com, you can also click over here and click sign in. Either way will work. Okay, and like many folks in the county, I have a personal Gmail account that I've had for a long time. And then once uh, FCPS got googly, I also now have my fcpsschools.net. Right? These are both Google accounts, but it's important to understand that they cannot interact with each other. All right. When you're in your FCPS Schools account, it's important to know that you cannot share to your Gmail account if you have a personal Gmail account or to any other account outside of this domain at fcpsschools.net. Okay? This is for FCPS only, and this is true for both you as well as your students, so something to keep in mind. So we're sticking here with the FCPS account. Now, I've already signed in before, so it recognizes my password. But for you, if you've never signed in before, just know it is the same password as all your other passwords, all right? So your computer login, your SIS login, your Blackboard login, everything is the same for both you and your students. So click Sign In. All right, now you can tell that I am signed into my Google account because my photo is up here in the top right. If you haven't added your photo yet, it's going to just be the uh, first letter of your last name. But that's going to show that I am signed in. Now, even if I closed out my browser and then opened up a new one, I would still be here signed in. That's a great thing about using Chrome is that once you're signed in, you're going to generally stay signed in. All right. Go up to these nine squares. You can see all the different applications that are available to you from Google. All right. 
just from your basic Google search, which we've all done a million times, to that Gmail, um, to the very popular Google Docs, which is very similar to uh, Microsoft Word, Sheets very similar to Microsoft Excel, and Slides very similar to Microsoft PowerPoint, right? So a lot of great tools for, there, for you to use there. We're going to keep it simple and just talk about Drive and then talk about Google Docs, but just know that there's plenty out here for you to get into. So let's click Go to Drive. Okay, so here we are in my Google Drive. It probably looks a lot like my H Drive used to look before I started using Google. I have all of my um, folders set up here, as well as some files that I have not assigned to specific folders yet. If you're new to Google, what you'll probably be doing first is starting to set up some of your folders. All right, so maybe you have a, a World History folder that you want to keep separate from your World History 2 folder. Um, within that folder, you can start to create more subfolders, perhaps like unit folders, things like that. All right, but since you're new to Google, what you're probably doing first is to create new folders and then also start uploading some of your folders or some of your files. All right, so if you have a whole bunch of stuff on your H drive or a bunch of stuff on your flash drive that you want to start moving over to your Google, this is where you're going to be. All right, so if you click File Upload, you can see now I have everything here that I have saved locally on my computer or here on my H drive. Now, because I'm so googly, I don't use my H drive very often. All I have is an archive of my email. But if I wanted to add that to my Google Drive, I could simply click it, click open, and now it would be there on my Google Drive. It's still going to stay on my H drive until I erase it, but it's also now going to be on my Google Drive. Right, some other features in your drive, you have this folder called Shared With Me. Anything that's been shared with you from other folks in the county or from students are all going to be here in Shared With Me. Right. If you also wanted to go to recent, that's where you're going to see the things that you have most recently worked on. If you wanted to star something or move it to the trash, those are all still be available to you. Like I said in the beginning, it's very hard to delete something from Google. Um, it's just going to be there as long as you have opened it. So a really great tool. All right. So while we're here, let's go ahead and create a new doc just to show you how this works. All right, so as promised, Google Docs looks very similar to Microsoft Word, right? You're able to uh, pick your font, pick the size, have different kinds of alignments and uh, bullets, things like that. So very similar to Microsoft Word. If you were going to upload a file that is in Microsoft Word, you could also open it within the Google Docs and then be able to edit it from there. All right, so Google's really intuitive. Really, if you want to change something, basically all you have to usually do is just click on it. So if I want to change the title, for example, I click on it and now I can rename it. Yay. All right, if I want to start typing, let's say I'm going to, I'm a student and I'm going to start an essay. You can see it's very similar to Microsoft Word, but what's great here is the collaboration piece in Google, right? So my teacher can now come in and leave comments for me, all right? They can even go up here to suggest and even change, make some grammar changes, right? So let's say I want to change this to I am, right? And now the student could come back in and just be like, all right, I accept it, all right? So a really great way to have that collaboration piece. Another way to have that collaboration piece is to share. Right, so I'm going to show you the share settings here on this Google Doc, but I want you to also know that the share, how you share something is going to be the same no matter which Google app you're using. So right now we're using Google Docs, but if I was going to share an entire folder or share a uh, Google Slides presentation, this would be the same steps. Right, so if I click share. Now I can pick who I want to share this with. All right, so if I start typing in somebody else's name, it's going to recognize it and come up. And then that person who I share it with has some few options. You could have that person be able to edit it, all right? So go into the document and edit right away. Or maybe they can just read it and then comment or to only view, all right? So you have those three different options there. Now let's say I wanted to have a link that someone could click on this to get it. So I click on right here, click share the link. Now this creates a link that anybody in Fairfax County that has it can then view this document. So for example, on the um, Lee High School Technology Google site, I have a lot of how-to Google Docs on there. This is the setting that I have, right? Because everybody has the link, all you gotta do is view it and then sign in, show that you're a Fairfax County person, and then you can view that document, all right? Now let's say somebody has shared something with you, but you are not able to edit it, okay? Very simple fix to that. You can go up here to File and click Make a Copy going to um, ask you to rename it if you want. The default is going to be copy of and click OK. Now this will be my copy and I will be able to edit it and share away, um, 
at other people as collaborators, whatever my heart desires, okay? So just know that anytime that something is shared with you and you are not able to edit it, simply file, make a copy, and then you can. Now, if I wanted to move this to one of my folders, I could go file and move to, or if I'm in my Google Drive, I could simply take that file and then, oops, I can take that file and then drag it to whichever folder I wanted to. Now remember my example where I said that a passionate student who's working on this essay, but then the bell rings, they have to get to lunch, they have 70 million tweets to read on their phone, right? So, and they quickly exit out, shut down, and their work is lost forever, right? No, there it is, right? There is my essay that I started working on. I don't have to worry about saving it, saving it to my H drive, attaching it anywhere. It's all right there, ready for me to work on next class. All right, so now you got the basics. You know why it's important to use Google. Uh, you know how to sign in. You know the basic features of adding folders, uploading your old Microsoft files, and uh, sharing. All right, so I just have a few more parting words and helpful hints as you continue on your Google Scholar journey. All right, for one, remember sharing within FCPS only. So if you have something in your FCPS Google Drive, you would not be able to share that out with somebody outside of FCPS. So keep that in mind for you and your students. And remember, same passwords, super convenient. If a student can get onto a computer, they can get onto their Google Drive. And remember, if you have, if something's been shared with you that you are not able to edit, simply click on file, make a copy, and then it's yours to edit. And Google's super intuitive, okay? So go ahead and click around. If you're not sure how to do something, chances are by clicking around, you can kind of figure it out and, and find the way to get, get the job done. But of course, if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one session with me, you've watched this video, you still have tons of questions, but you wanna start using your Google Drive, I'm here for you, ready and able, so go ahead and set up a time with me and we can talk through this process. But really, the best thing to do, anytime you have a new cool tool or some new technology that you want to have in your classroom, it's all about just going for it. Know that I am here to support that. There's lots of things that we can do together, but it's all about going for it because you got it. All right, I'll see you next time for another cool tool.